Hey guys, what's going on? After playing a game, usually a Call of Duty game, at their big reveal, I sit down and do a critical overview. Instead of individual topics, we're going to be talking about everything at once, and this is also the video where I'm going to get the most serious, most critical, and most negative. We're going to start off with the good, which is obviously the good, and then we're going to move on to the bad, which are things that are pretty bad, not good, annoying, whatever, and at the end, the ugly. Those are the scary things. Those are the deal breakers, the purchase cancelers, and the very, very bad things that spook a lot of people in the community, or perhaps just me if my opinion differs. If at any point in this commentary I use gameplay that's not my own, it'll be marked on the screen and of course I did it with permission. So let's start off with the good. There are no jetpacks, wall runs, or thrusting in the game. It is 99% boots on the ground. You can do a knee slide, which is pretty similar to the one from Black Ops 3. You can swim in the water. And there is one specialist that has one ability that allows you to grapple hook. I don't think it's the best thing in the world. You won't see very much of it since each team can only have one of that person. So at most, only one enemy can do that. But for the most part, you should expect good old-fashioned boots on the ground, except you can slide on your knees. The new health system overall allows for better weapon balance. 150 health allows you to have better balanced weapons, more interesting things you can do with integer numbers in the engine, and it overall slows down the gunfights by about one to two shots. The slower time to kill, not everybody's on board for, but I do think that it's a good thing. That's going to be less likely deaths and more actual gunfights where you fight people and aim and make decisions instead of just getting nuked and blown up almost instantly. Speaking of guns, they have the same guns up handling that Black Ops 3 did, that no matter if you're swimming, if you're mantling, if you're running, whatever, you can still fire your gun. It may be hip fire during some of these movements, but you never put your gun down and you kind of never get caught with your pants down. You never get caught unable to react. You throw grenades with your left hand, you use streaks with your left hand. You're pretty much never out of the gunfight, which I think is a very good thing. And on the topic of guns, again, there's a lot of very unique weapons and attachments in Black Ops 3. The new helm allows for a wider range of weapon variety, you'll say balance, and they completely changed how attachments work. Each gun has its own unique set of attachments, with not many being shared between classes, and each gun also has its very own special attachment that you can only unlock for two points. The special attachment usually makes the gun quite beefy, but it's kind of expensive to equip, and I think it's a good thing. It adds a little more personality, a little more depth to the strategy for the weapons, and I found it quite fun. The mini-map has been completely overhauled in a way that I definitely feel is good. There's some people that are just very averse to change, and I understand that. But in Call of Duty games, players, myself included, tend to stare at the mini map a lot. It just lets you know where all the players are. You just wait for a dot to pop up and go on down the dots, and you can see players almost indefinitely far away. The new mini map has a fog of war where you don't see enemies or their dots unless they're actually in your field of vision, or you've used some ability or item to give you that view. Uh, you know, like a UAV, a Blackbird, something kind of like that. A sensor dart, which we'll talk about later on in the bat. Overall, the mini map is good. You'll be staring less at the mini map and more hunting people, which means you won't be staring at the map when you walk around corners to get blasted by a guy with a shotgun. And it adds a level of depth and strategy to the game because the noise you make, how close you are to enemies, your suppressor, the abilities, what your teammates are seeing, all of this plays a big game in spotting enemies on the mini map, which I think is a good change. Colors are back, thank god. The last couple of cots, though, I won't I won't give Infinite Warfare this criticism, they did really good with colors, have been kind of bleary. Call of Duty games, you know, even very popular ones like Modern Warfare and Ghost and things like that, had some pretty drab colors. Thankfully, the Black Ops series has always had big, bright, punchy colors, and as a male with limited color vision, color blindness for lack of a better word, having bright colors makes it way easier for me to spot enemies, determine who's friendly, who's not, and just enjoy the maps in general. Moving along to map the map design seems on point, which is usual for Treyarch. Treyarch very rarely makes bad maps. I wasn't never expecting bad maps from Treyarch, but it's good to know that they've done the same thing. They are a little bit more clustery than usual. Treyarch tends to make these very small, simple, three-lane, I call them bounce house kind of maps, because it's like, here's the room where you all fight. Here's the room where you head glitch. Here's the one flank route where everybody's going to wait to snipe you. These were a little bit more cluttery. There were a few extra paths, there was a little bit more junk to hide around, so I think they heard the criticism about the bounce house maps and tried to change it up, but I think it's overall good. The maps felt good. The control mode that they added to the game is downright amazing. I think control mode is a very, very good mode in Call of Duty. I like it almost as much as I like War from World War II. I know not everybody was on board with War, but if War is the most casual mode that you've ever added where you can just, just go crazy at people, control mode
mode is the new competitive mode. It plays really well with the limited number of lives you have. It's got a kind of a survival element too. There's a teamwork element with controlling the points. You gotta save up your abilities to combo to break the offense and defense, kind of like Counter-Strike or Siege or something. Overwatch, it feels really good. It plays really good. I never thought a mode like this would make it odd, but I was very, very impressed with that mode. And the game as a whole, gameplay-wise, has an overall good and smooth feel, which again is normal for Treyarch. There's nothing janky about it, nothing weird, no animations that go crazy, no slowdowns, nothing that really breaks your sense of immersion in the game. It's just very smooth and fluid. Moving along in the good thing, Call of Duty Blackout Battle Royale comes with Black Ops 4 at launch. The map looks huge, so there's no indications of the baby VR, no indications of like a 20 player battle royale. It's looking really good, so I'm hyped to see that. There are three full zombies maps at launch. There are two with the new characters and one with the old characters. They look completely insane. They have their own story, their full experiences. That's more zombies than you've ever had at launch, which is good. You have zombies daily, weekly, and monthly missions, so there's a lot of content around zombies. A lot of content in general. Black Ops 4 is planned to have super long-term daily, weekly, monthly, yearly content, which is a good thing. And the PC version looks like it's getting great support. They've promised, they've even shown ultra-wide, multiple monitor, 4K HD, high frame rate, all the nice things that you want in a PC game. They've expanded the PC team, added Battle.net support, and it looks like we're going to be getting one of the best PC versions we've had in a long time. Rares, it's not out yet. And one thing I'm going to put in the good, which I know not everybody is onto, and that's what we're going to use to transition into the bad, is that specialist characters are back. We'll stick with just the characters for a little bit in multiplayer in Black Ops 3. I thought the specialist characters added a bit of fun. It added a little bit of character. I like the way that they make unique callouts, the way that they talk trash to each other. They add just a little bit of spice to the map. The specialist you play has meaning, and there's a hidden story that you can dig out of the lore as well, which I'll be doing in a later video. That was fun for multiplayer. I enjoyed playing as a specific character that had voice lines just like Overwatch or League of Legends. And the specialist abilities are back with a greater focus on team play. This is going to be the last topic and good before we move to the bad. The team play focus for specialists worked really well at the event, but I was with a group of bunch of YouTubers, playing a bunch of other YouTubers, and we all play hard, we try hard, as a hero shooter type game or an ability shooter type game, they all comboed with each other really well. It felt natural, it felt normal, and I genuinely enjoyed it. I know a lot of people in the community didn't, but I did. Now, moving on to the bad, we're going to take that same topic, and there is... There is a bad on the specialist abilities, several of them. There's some ugly on the specialist abilities as well. But the bad is that they're back. And it doesn't bother me, but I know for a fact that is not what the community wanted. The community did not want specialist abilities back. They did not want divisions from World War II. They did not want the operators from Infinite Warfare. They just wanted no abilities in their game. But abilities came back despite what the community wanted. The setting is the future, again, which doesn't bother me. I like future stuff, but it's not what the community wanted. The community wanted a modern, grounded, real kind of game, and they got future. The next topic in bad is that there's lots of overlap from Black Ops 3 when it comes to aesthetics, design, characters, map, story, weapons, abilities. There's a lot of Black Ops 3 assets that have been repurposed, reused, imagine it's a prequel to Black Ops 3, right? This comes before Black Ops 3, so it makes sense that you have the same characters and some of the same guns and some of the same things, but there's quite a lot of it, and the game does feel quite a bit more Black Ops 3-ish. I was initially on the on the train that it felt more like Black Ops 2, but after having some, about a week of space and time to think and watch and talk to other YouTubers and see other gameplays and get some outside perspective, I believe I've changed my mind and I'm going to say it's closer to Black Ops 3 than it is to 2, which doesn't bother me again. I haven't played as much Black Ops 3 post-launch because I've had problems with my PlayStation, but a lot of people have. A lot of people have been playing Black Ops 3 for the last two years, and the question is, do you want to play another two years of Black Ops 3 or another year of Black Ops 3? Do we really need more Black Ops 3? Did we want a Black Ops 3.5 or did we want something new? Some players will inevitably get tired of it. The 5v5 default size works great for me. I didn't really have any problems with it. 
But again, I played with really sweaty players that played aggressive and rushed and fought over objectives. I talked to other people that played at the event that played with press or the zombies group and more casual players, and they told me that the 5v5 default size felt small. They said that it didn't feel as action-packed, that it wasn't as good, and that they missed 6v6. So I believe this is something that's going to change a lot depending on what group you're playing with. And the people I talked to were very reputable. I don't think they would just BS me or be salty about it. The community's got plenty of salt about the decrease in player size as well. So if you're not playing with a good group, 5v5 might feel a little bit slower. And one criticism that I have yet to mention, but I've been talking to people about, and when I think about it, it really does at home and see it in my gameplay too, the score streaks that we got to use were underwhelming. There is a Hellstorm missile, but it's weaker, and that's kind of sad. Now the UAV and counter UAV are godly. They're very important. There is a Mantis score streak, which is like a walker tank. It looked amazing, but it was straight trash. It did absolutely nothing useful. It was easy to kill. Instead of dogs in the game, you get paratroopers again. And when J-Hub got them, his paratroopers didn't move around and hunt people. They, most of them would just post up and hit glitch, which isn't a very fun streak. It doesn't help you a lot, and it's kind of annoying to run into, so paratroopers are happy. And that's what I think that some gamers are going to do. Because let, let's be real, like the, the gamers that you run into in a casual lobby and casual Call of Duty are dicks. There's not like any secret gamer honor, it's not a, a ranked game, there's no great strategies, it doesn't matter when you lose, they're going to do whatever in the world that feels fun, and what feels fun is killing people in just about every game. You want to kill people and you want to make their day miserable, you can see it from quickscoping to FMG9s to noob tubes. Anytime there's a broken item in a Call of Duty game, gamers jump on it and use the ever-living, I'm trying not to curse, devil out of it. They use the devil out of it, right? And I think that that's what you're going to see somewhere, some combo, when the game comes out. I'm hoping that between the beta and Treyarch being Treyarch and, and generally making good games, that they find these and eliminate them, but with the sheer amount of abilities, they do, they do spook me. The increased focus on team play, I believe, is going to squeeze out lone wolves and TDM-only type players. The, the game clearly is designed around 5v5 team play, hard play, domination, the control mode, it's, it's more like Rainbow Six or Overwatch in that it's a hero shooter. You're supposed to communicate with your teammates. You're supposed to do combos. You're supposed to work together. But Call of Duty has a lot of lone wolf or solo players. Just a lot of people that only play Team Deathmatch, only solo. They used to be mercenary playlists. They don't really want to do competitive. They don't want to squat up. They shouldn't feel that they have to squat up. They don't want to use microphones. Microphones are basically dead on console anyway because of how Sony and Microsoft have handled the microphones. It's pretty much killed the microphone culture. So I don't think the game is going to be as fun for solo players or TDM players. And that's a very big demographic of players for Call of Duty, which is definitely going to be a bad thing. Hardcore and other niche game modes are likely going to suffer as well. I have no idea how any of all this crazy stuff is going to work in Hardcore, or Search and Destroy, or anything that's not the, the major respawn objective modes. I think that they are going to suffer. Even though we're definitely in the ugly, this doesn't have to be a bad thing. Pod players, pod community, anybody that plays this game can change and adapt to the new thing. They can, they can give it a spin and honest try to end up enjoying it, but if history does anything but repeat itself, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of people in the community that are very, very averse to these type of changes. They're just going to do the same things they've been doing for a long time, but with instinctives. Another huge item in the ugly, no campaign. Black Ops 4 does not have a traditional campaign. You've got some story in the multiplayer, and I think you have like some training story missions they mentioned somewhere, but the campaign is rip. Rest in pieces, rest in pepperonis, you will not get a campaign. I didn't think this was a big deal. I didn't play campaign, I didn't think a lot of gamers played campaign. But looking on YouTube and Reddit and Twitter and other places, apparently not having campaign is a really big deal to a lot of gamers, and they feel that their value has been stolen from the game and they don't want to pay $60 for it. So that's definitely an ugly, it's kind of one of those issues they danced around in the reveal. They, I wish there was a campaign just to make other people happy, and every now and then a COD campaign is really fun, generally. So the next thing up is that there's no information about content release plans either. We don't know if there's going to be a season pass, we don't know if content is going to be on PlayStation or Xbox or whatever first, or exclusive, and the fact that they're not doing a season pass edition or not doing anything like that leads me to believe that it's going to be monthly maps and content for free, like there's going to be new guns, new maps, new stuff, for free or, or incredibly cheap almost every single month in order to compete with Fortnite, no 
postseason needed. Because that's how Fortnite's changing. Fortnite's dropping new content like every week or two. So every game has to compete with that. I do believe there's a zombie season pass, if I'm not mistaken. I could be totally wrong on this, please forgive me. But I bet you have to pay for your zombies now. So those are closer to campaign, those are closer to big, high production experiences, so you should expect to pay for those. If we're buying a game for 60 bucks and we're not getting DLC, that means there has to be some kind of microtransactions. Even in the little private briefing thing I talked to Devon and the other developers about it, they were pretty clear that microtransactions other cosmetics and things were coming at some point. They were very vague and I didn't get a lot of details, but there has to be some kind of microtransactions. We know nothing about them, and I've been the guy sitting here saying, okay, well, if we get the DLC for free, I'm not going to complain about microtransactions. Just drop me loot boxes, drop me stuff, do whatever. But I think gaming as a whole is finally starting to move away from loot boxes and more toward direct purchases. I think the Legends are doing that forever and for my free popularizing it again. So while I'm oh, totally okay with loot boxes but free maps, I would rather have free maps and direct purchase microtransactions. You can charge me $50 for a skin, $90 for some stupid dance, it doesn't matter as long as I can see the price and I don't just have to open endless stupid boxes and try to get it randomly or save up my box points or whatever there is. I'm, I'm tired of buying boxes for video games, I have no desire to do that. And most of the games that I've played don't have any boxes that I need to open either, so hopefully we get direct purchase and no more stupid microtransaction boxes, because Black Ops 3 system was by far the worst. When new guns come out in Black Ops 3, if you if you have nothing, like if you if you bought Black Ops 3 today and you wanted to unlock the most recent gun, you could reasonably expect to pay one to two thousand dollars. And at that price point, you could actually buy some of these guns in real life before you could buy them in the game, which is just a dollar value wise. So that's got to go. I think Treyarch and Sledgehammer and all the companies were kind of experimenting.